Hey everyone, do I have your attention? Really, do I have your attention? Do you know how long the average attention span is for humans? An article in Time Magazine says that we have a shorter attention span than a goldfish. The average attention span for the notoriously ill-focused goldfish is nine seconds. But according to a study from Microsoft, humans now have, on average, an attention span of eight seconds. Think about it. How often do you check Instagram or Facebook or Snapchat? How frequently are you checking your texts or emails or WhatsApp? How often are you viewing YouTube or TikTok? Some of you may not be thinking so much about any of those things. Instead, you're focused on what you're going to eat for lunch. And having said that, I've already lost the attention of a lot of you. When I first was starting Journey, I prayed over and over, teach me your way, Lord, that I may rely on your faithfulness. Give me an undivided heart. Say the last part of that with me. Give me an undivided heart. The desire to have an undivided heart for God is so strong in me still. Because of it, I helped write one of the first original songs for Journey Collaborative that has as its title, Undivided Heart. Hopefully, before too long, you'll get to hear it. How many of you are like me in that you want to know the Lord's way, but for that to be a reality, you, like me, need an undivided heart? But so much of the time, we just don't have it. At the beginning of this series, we talked about how we may believe that Jesus is the way and the truth and the life. But we can't seem to figure out what that means for our lives. Because the way we're trying to live life, our way of doing life, just isn't working for us in the way that we'd hoped. And it's leaving us tired, exhausted, disheartened. We struggle with living a joyful, meaningful, contented life because our hearts are divided. Our attention is diverted. And along with that, we don't have much of a sense of the closeness of God or to much of anyone else for that matter, including family and friends, because we're so distracted with so many less important things that we spend our time on. We talked last week about how we have the tendency to busily spend a lot of our lives on things that ultimately don't matter that much. And we talked about how vitally important it is to know God's loving presence in our lives so that we might be truly present in the moment with people so that love and concern, caring and compassion might be truly experienced. That's the way Jesus lived. And that's the way we who are Jesus' followers are to live because it's a much better way to live than the way we usually do. Jesus was wholly present with people. He deeply and genuinely engaged with people even when it may have seemed to others to be silly, foolish, inconvenient, a waste of time. In the 10th chapter of the Gospel of Mark, There's the story of a blind man named Bartimaeus who was sitting by a roadside begging. When he heard that Jesus of Nazareth was near, Bartimaeus was determined that he was going to get Jesus' attention. He began to shout out, Jesus, Son of David, have mercy on me, help me. Now, there were throngs of people gathered around Jesus clamoring for his attention. People in the crowd tried to silence Bartimaeus. They told him to be quiet, to shush. They assumed Jesus was too important. Jesus was too busy to take the time to engage with some blind guy on the side of the road. But they didn't understand the way of Jesus, just like many of us don't. This broken person whom others thought they had no time for, Jesus had time for. Jesus 
fully gave his attention to Bartimaeus in the midst of the hurt and struggles he was experiencing. Jesus asked him an intriguing question. Jesus asked, What do you want from me? What do you want from me? How would you answer that question? The blind man knew what he wanted. He wanted to see. And he received from Jesus healing grace. I ask you, what do you want from Jesus? Really, what do you want from Jesus? In the 19th chapter of the Gospel of Luke, there's a story of a man who was not without sight, but rather who was short-sighted. The man's name was Zacchaeus. He was not a poor, blind beggar. He was a rich, corrupt tax collector. Zacchaeus was not down and out. He was up and out. He was living a life far from the way of God because his heart was divided. In fact, it was primarily given over to the pursuit of money. Do any of us find ourselves in that same place? Our attention is more focused on money and the lifestyle that we want rather than knowing a life-transforming relationship with Jesus. Zacchaeus hadn't had time for much of anyone else beside himself because the person he primarily thought about was himself. Do any of us find ourselves in that same place? I remember when I was young, there was a kid's song we sang in church. Zacchaeus was a wee little man. A wee little man was he. He climbed up in a sycamore tree for the Lord he wanted to see. With my being short as a child, and yes, I know I'm still short today, I resonated with Zacchaeus, whom I thought was simply another short dude who wanted to know Jesus. I could relate to that. I wanted to know Jesus too. I didn't understand that Zacchaeus was a despised little man. He was a hated little man because he would charge people exorbitant amounts of taxes, cheating people so that he would become rich. However, on the day that Jesus passes through town, Zacchaeus is changed. But that was only after, like with Bartimaeus, people grumbled. They thought Jesus shouldn't have anything to do with this guy who was a thieving tax collector. Again, Jesus gave his undivided attention to a man who was broken, even if Zacchaeus had not realized he was broken in his selfishness until that very moment. When Zacchaeus experienced the acceptance of Jesus. It liberated him from his selfishness. His heart was changed. His life was changed, radically changed. And get this. Zacchaeus didn't give a piddly 10% out of gratitude after experiencing the mercy and forgiveness, the compassion and caring of Jesus. No. He gave away 50% of everything he owned to people who were poor because that showed the depth of love he'd experienced from Jesus. And in addition to that, whomever he had cheated, Zacchaeus committed to pay them back not one, not two, not three, but four times what he had fraudulently taken. When you truly know Jesus, it shows in a transformed way of living a selfless way of living instead of a selfish way of living. When you truly know Jesus, it shows in a transformed way of giving, a selfless way of giving instead of a selfish way of withholding for yourself. Here's the deal. Whether you're down and out or whether you're up and out, you need the salvation from sin and selfishness that Jesus offers. But many, many people don't realize this. 
because of the distractions that take up their time and energy as a result of the way they're living. And what's one of the greatest distractions that grabs the attention of Americans today? Can you guess? The answer is your cell phone. Do you want to guess how many times a day, on average, people touch their phones? According to the Economic Times magazine, researchers have found, on average, that people tapped, swiped, and clicked a whopping 2,617 times each day. And the heaviest users, the top 10%, on average, did so over 5,000 times a day, according to the researchers. Now, is there a better way to live than to have our attention glued to the many distractions that come our way in contemporary culture? Is there something better to focus our attention on? Jesus said, Instead, be concerned above everything else with the kingdom of God and with what He requires of you, and He will provide you with all these other things. So, do not worry about tomorrow. It will have enough worries of its own. There is no need to add to the troubles each day brings. Why is it that you and I may have the tendency to not be fully present in relationships? Why is it that you and I may have the tendency to freak out about the things we may worry about possibly happening in the future? Is it because we focus our attention on the troubles of this world and do not focus enough on the goodness of God and trust that God is at work and that every day is a gift from God to be cherished? How would our lives be different if we were to adopt the attitude of the psalmist? This day belongs to the Lord. Let's celebrate and be glad today. Focusing on the Lord and living fully in the present as we celebrate God's gift of love and life can make such a huge difference in our lives and is a way better way of living than what a lot of us do. What happens for a lot of us is that we get caught up in the game of what if. Instead of celebrating and being glad today, how many of us again and again anxiously ask, but what if? What if I don't pass the test? What if I don't get into the college I want? What if my business fails? What if I don't get the job I want? What if I lose my job? What if she leaves me? What if he doesn't love me anymore? What if, what if, what if? If you want to find a better way of living, don't get caught up in playing the game of what if. Embrace what Jesus said. Do not worry about tomorrow. It will have enough worries of its own. Trust Jesus will be with you, whatever your circumstances might be. Do you know when the most important moment for you should be? It should be right now. Some of us are tempted to try and live for the big moments, to orient our lives around the big moments. But most of life is lived in the small moments. How huge a difference would it make in our lives if we were to choose to celebrate and be glad in the small moments of life day after day? Instead of focusing your life on a bucket list that you want to do in the future, how different would your life be if you truly engaged with, were fully present with the people you say you love? How different would your life be 
if you chose not to allow the distractions of life to disrupt the meaningful times you could spend with people you love and with the Lord. If you want to be a great spouse, if you want to be a great parent, if you want to be a great friend, choose to give your undivided attention to the people you say you care about. How would your life be different if you chose to live and love like Jesus with an undivided heart, with an undiverted attention? 2 Peter 1, 5-8 says, Do your best to improve your faith by adding goodness, understanding, self-control, patience, devotion to God, concern for others, and love. If you keep growing in this way, it will show that what you know about our Lord Jesus Christ has made your lives useful and meaningful. If you keep growing in becoming more and more like Jesus, you'll find your life to be more useful and productive, more meaningful and joyful. How about giving that a try? If today you really want to give the way of Jesus a try, if you want to focus your life on what Jesus wants to do with you and for you, we want to offer you the opportunity to make the decision, to make the commitment to become a follower of Jesus. And I'm going to lead us in a time of prayer right now. And if you silently want to Pray this prayer within yourself as you make this choice to become a follower of Jesus. I invite you to do that. So let's pray. Lord Jesus, there are times when I think I have my life all together. I think things are going well. But then somehow I realize there's this emptiness inside. There's this sense of my life isn't what I want it to be. And as I've come to know more and more about you, I realize that you love me in my brokenness and in my sin, but you want me to admit my sin, my selfishness, so I can let that go. So Jesus, right now, I acknowledge my selfishness and my sin that has kept me separated from you and from other people, though I may not have wanted to admit that. And Jesus, I ask you to forgive me and take away any shame or guilt or regret that's inside me. Create within me a new sense of my value and worth because you love me. And Jesus, I believe with my whole heart that even though I've not deserved it, you died on the cross because of my sin and selfishness. That you were buried in the tomb and then raised on the third day so that I and all people everywhere might know new life. And so, Jesus, I, I believe in you and I embrace that new life you offer. And Jesus, I commit to seek every day to live in your way, to follow you and your example of sacrificial love, and generous giving, and serving and helping, and caring, working for justice, being a light in a dark world. And, and there are going to be times, Jesus, I stumble and fall and mess up again. I'll ask you to forgive me again. But to the best of my ability, with your help, I'm going to live a life that honors you. As today, I make the decision to become a Christian. I pray this in your holy name. Amen. Now, if you prayed that prayer of commitment, I invite you to go to our website, journeyconnection.com. Click on the eConnect card and fill that out. Let us know of whatever decision you've made. We want to follow up with you and help you to learn how to move forward in faith. Maybe you didn't decide today to be a follower of Jesus, but you'd like to talk about that. You'd like to gain more information about that. Please be in contact with us through the eConnect card. Maybe you're struggling, you're feeling alone and broken, and you just want somebody to pray for you and encourage you. Again, let us know through the eConnect card. 
uh, through our online congregation. We want to make a difference in people's lives. So please let us know how we might do that. And know that because you have attended this online service, you may be a part of our regular online congregation. You can give financially to support the ministries of our church online and in person as we try to share the love of Jesus. One of the mission partners of Journey Church is Habitat for Humanity. And when you give financially to Journey, a part of that goes to Habitat to help provide housing for the working poor. You can make a difference through your giving, and we want to encourage you to do that and to be generous as you seek to follow in the way of Jesus. We're so glad that you've been a part of this series, It's Not Working, and we hope you're finding out that Jesus will work with you and for you if you'll open yourself up to the never-failing love of Christ. God bless you all.